Hey guys, good morning um, to the busy bees of the Surge group. Um, I'm Susan Baker. I am SSC in Team B and I've been asked to do a bit of training on social media. I'm going to stick to Facebook because that's all I use um, and I'm just going to assume that people can hear me. I am in my car. How good is technology? How good is this business that you can just do it <laughs> wherever between dropping your son off at his school and your 10 o'clock um, appointment. So, um, yeah, I, I will share probably for maybe 15 minutes or so, um, on my perspective, my opinion, my experience, I guess, with, um, Facebook specifically. Um, I see there's one person who's joined and can you just, Melissa, can you hear me? Okay. Give me maybe a thumbs up or a yes or whatever. I'm sure it's fine. Um, but I'm in my car. Okay. Janice, you can hear me. Hi, Janice. Okay. Okay. Good morning, guys. Um, so as I said, I'm going to stick to Facebook specifically because that's all I use. Um, and maybe the other people training this week will talk about other methods of, um, uh, like other media mediums, um, in social media. <laughs> um, anyway, here's the truth. I only joined Facebook probably four years ago, three or four years ago. I mean, I was, I was into it. Like I had joined it, um, whenever it first started, but I kind of actually didn't get it. I kind of made fun of it. I thought it was like all about gossip and, you know, um, people posted random ridiculous stuff that was, seemed really meaningless. And then, um, about four years ago, I decided to get back into it. So I got back into Facebook mainly because I wanted to reconnect with a, with a lot of high school friends. Um, and then I realized it could really become a great tool for promoting who I am and, and what I do. And so that's what I see with Facebook now. I mean, everybody knows, in fact, it's a, it's an amazing platform for, um, you know, yeah, for, for expanding your network and building a following. And so I've just jotted a couple things down that I wanted to share with you in particular. So I don't have formal social media training at all. This is really just what I've learned from using Facebook in the last, I would say three to four years. Um, and the first thing I think it's important for all of us to think about is who we are. Who are you? You know, what are you all about? Um, what are your interests? What are your values? And what do you want to actually project to the world? If you scrolled through your Facebook right now, what would it say about you? And is that what you want to be projecting? Um, and so it's worthwhile to stop really, um, in particular with your juice plus business to say, okay, so how is juice plus part of my life? Um, and I really need to step into the place where I call myself a health rep with juice plus. And so what does that look like? What do I want to project? Um, does your Facebook posts or your timeline, does it look like somebody who is, um, living a healthy life? Um, are you just sharing other people's stuff? Is there nothing really about you or your opinions? Um, you know, it would be a surprise and I don't think it's an effective tool for you for your juice plus business. If all you do is share, um, videos of, I don't know, cats playing or something, right. And you're sharing like random stuff and then all of a sudden you're advertising shred 10, right? I think that kind of takes people off guard, but if, um, you know, a 10 day jumpstart post comes along after you've done a bunch of posts about health and wellness, maybe some, you know, food or nutrition stuff, or even just about how you live a healthy life or you're trying to, then it's not as much of a surprise for people. And I think one of the things a lot of us are self-conscious of is, are we using Facebook to just sell? You know, none of us want to do that. And in fact, Juice Plus doesn't want us to do that either. It's really about exposing people and inviting people into your life and how you're living your life. And that's interesting and enticing to some people, right? And that's what they want to join into. Um, okay. So what else? Yeah. Does it look like somebody who's living a healthy life? Does it look like, do you look like somebody who wants to inspire other people? Um, I encourage you to post things in a confident way, but in a real way, you know, be real, be authentic. So have the words be your words. I mean, a lot of times I love what other people post, right? And I'm really inspired by that. And I'll ask them, you know, do you mind if I sort of cut and paste from this post? Because I love how you worded that. And I think that's okay. But again, if all you're doing is sharing other people's stuff or literally copying and pasting other people's stuff, um, you kind of can't fool the universe, right? 
it, you know, the world catches on to that. It really, to truly draw and build a following, it's got to come from you. It's got to be from your heart and your mind and your words. Um, and if there's one thing I've learned, <laughs> mainly in the last week, is that anything you post, you really need to be able to stand by um, because it goes places. So stand by your words, step into that and be confident in, in that and say, yeah, like this is something that I really believe in and I would have this shared, you know, hundreds of thousands of times or whatever it might be. Um, and here's a good question to ask yourself. Would you follow you, right? Is, are you interesting? Are you projecting a healthy lifestyle or projecting an honest and authentic person? Would you follow you? And if, if the answer is no, then start to stand back and say, okay, so what do I want to project so that I'm drawing people in? I'm drawing the people that I want to draw in. Um, and then in a more objective or concrete way, what are your goals with social media, specifically Facebook? So um, for me, for example, when I first decided I would start to get back into Facebook. Um, my goal for myself was three posts a week. That's all I could manage. This was like three, four years ago. The kids were obviously much younger and I saw, and I was comparing myself to like all these other people who were prolific. I was like, I cannot manage that. Like I can't keep up with it. So my goal was three posts a week and I was strategic with it. Um, I knew when I wanted to post, I knew what I was going to post about in general. So think about this for yourself. What can you commit to in terms of posting? And is there a theme that you could post about? So for example, with myself, every week, my goal is to post one thing about my family life or ex my life experience, you know, just as a person. Um, a second post is to, is to be about nutrition or food or healthy eating. And the third post may or may not be related to juice plus so whether it's promoting an event or it is um, kind of posting about you know the shred 10 or what was the transform 30 lifestyle um, that kind of thing um, there may be other things that come up every week for you as well so you can ask yourself um, you know what could you commit to in terms of posting on social media and be consistent with that um, hold yourself to that because that's how you build a following people will see that you are kind of committed to being out there and, um, and, and they'll start to become interested in that and look for that. Um, inspirational posts, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the next thing I, I thought I would chat quickly about is, are you using Facebook effectively for your juice plus business and, and just in general? So, um, you know, I know that people have studied when are the really good times to actually post on Facebook, and, and I think it changes, um, but you'll start, you'll start to notice a pattern with yourself as well, um, like when your audience is actually, you know, able to check out posts or comment on more posts. Um, in general, what I have found is that the evenings after 7 o'clock, Monday to Thursday seem to be really good times to post. Um, I know some of us as well have some good um, exposure in the morning when people are kind of getting up and getting ready and getting their kids ready. So kind of before 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock um, in the morning. Another great time I find is Saturday mornings um, and another great time is Sunday evenings I find. So that's me trying to use Facebook effectively so that I know those are the times where I'm going to um, get the most people viewing my posts. And then, of course, when people start to comment on the post, it just keeps it much more active as well. So are you using Facebook effectively or are you just, you know, you've got this amazing post and you've put your heart and soul into it and you've posted it at like, you know, 140 on a Wednesday afternoon? Unless it's an amazing, amazing post, it may not actually go anywhere compared to if you waited till seven o'clock at night, right? Um, I just want to check my time. Yeah. All right. So a couple more minutes. Um, as well, Facebook is really effective when you follow up and follow through. That is the same for any aspect of any business. The follow up and the follow through is critical. So what do I mean by that? Um, if people comment on your post, at some point in the next, I would say 24 hours, you wanna go back in and 
reply to some of those comments or private message some of those people um, to say, you know, thanks for commenting and yeah, I'll definitely keep you in the loop the next time I do a, you know, 12 days of smoothie challenge or whatever it is, right? Um, and and so following through as well. If, um, if somebody wants more information, obviously, following through with that. So, um, and the other thing I would add to that is, um, it, it kind of leads me to the next point, which is that um, be aware of how much output, I call it, how much output you're, um, you're, you're putting out there on your Facebook. As in, I don't personally, this is my own opinion, I don't love to see that somebody is just constantly advertising stuff, whether it's like, you know, join my 10 day jumpstart or now I'm doing this or now I'm doing that. It starts to feel like a lot of solicitation as opposed to it being mixed in nicely with some personal posts or some value add stuff like a recipe, you know, that kind of thing. So trying to um, mix it up as well. And then, um, on that note, in terms of kind of following through, if you have posted about Shred 10, let's say, or a 10 day jumpstart, whatever you're calling it, um, and you've got all this, you know, response and you follow through and you've started your group and then that's it on your timeline, that was the last thing you posted was basically a join me for my next Shred 10. Um, what I would suggest is that at some point during the Shred 10 or even after the Shred 10, or whatever program you're running, um, that you make a post about it. Something like, you know, loving the fact that I'm clean eating this week and, I, you know, such a great reminder that I can feel so good with how I eat or whatever. So you're involving your, your, your um, Facebook friends and your following in what you've been doing. So yes, you've kind of taken it off of offline or taken it off your timeline, but you are still um, allowing them to see that it's still happening, right? Um, and I had this conversation with one of my reps recently where she said, well, I, I'm not even really getting like amazing results. I don't really have that story to post. And I was like, that's fine. So you don't need to say that, but you could say, love that I've committed to the 10 day jumpstart. Um, it always feels so good to, you know, eat healthy and remember to, you know, whatever. Right. So that's real. That's authentic. And it still is kind of that reminder and exposure to your friends and following that. Oh, right. You know, Susan said she was going to do that thing. And I guess she's doing it because now she's, you know, she's talking about it, um, you know, to build your following that way. Okay. What else? Um, involving them. Yeah. Involving them in the process. And then the last thing I was going to comment on is, um, uh, using Facebook to build your following. So one of the things that's come out of some of the recent um, Juice Plus trainings, uh, in particular with Mitra and um, Nicole and Melissa and Jen, is this idea that all of us could have um, a private group, right? So what was maybe our Transform 30 group or Shred group could now be your own sort of um, you know, Susan Baker's health community group. And that's how you can start to really build a following so that you're sharing future events, um, future offerings with that group. And Facebook is amazing for that, right? Is to start to build this community of people who are really following what you're doing. Um, I think that's all. I, yeah, I, I don't know what else um, to add. I'm just going to quickly go through what else I had jotted down here. Um, yeah, I think the most important thing that I would suggest um, is that besides using Facebook effectively and, you, you know, almost strategically, is that you ask yourself if you would follow you. You know, are you somebody that um, is interesting, is being real, is being um, authentic, is showing they're trying to live a healthy life, um, trying to, you know, influence or, emp you know, empower their community in some positive way. Um, because Facebook can be an amazing, amazing tool for that. Anyway, guys, um, I don't know any questions. That's really from my, my, uh, perspective. Okay. Well, I'm going to close it off. I know that Michelle Foco on Wednesday is going to be talking about, um, social media. And then I believe there's one other person on Friday who's going to do it. So, um, awesome. Good luck building your followings.